the lead up to the to, to the ninety two uh, election, and it, you know, feels like every election has its own different wave of technology or other things that are that are driving that election. What did you, you know, at the time Bush was the incumbent, all these uh, Democratic challengers. What were you kind of looking for or expecting in the, in ninety two? Well, I don't know. I, I really can't remember that part. <laughs> I mean, certainly Bill Clinton was, um, I mean, I always thought Bill Clinton was a pain in the ass of the worst water. So, um, and um, I like Jerry Brown myself very much, and, and I liked uh, Senator from Massachusetts. Who's, who's really, you know, the last politician that ever could speak to anybody in an ordinary man. I mean, those guys are all gone. There were some really interesting people. But I think the, the thing about that film is that at looking at it after all these years is that Kevin here has a dead eye. I mean, it's just one shot after another in that film. It's just so totally right on. And uh, all I did was drag him around and point my finger at places where <coughs> people were running. <laughs> Our original plan was to uh, make a movie about the entire election cycle, all the way through the general election. And uh, I'll never forget driving back from New Hampshire, where we'd been shooting on the ground for a month uh, with Jim. And this idea came to me, which was the I thought we'd shot some good stuff. We hadn't seen it, but I had a good feeling about it. And I knew the, the feeds were good. And I said, uh, look, why don't we just make this movie about New Hampshire and get it into movie theaters before the general election, which was you know, several months away, which we did. So that was, that was fun. We did it fast. Kevin, uh, Jim talked about uh, you know, your, your eye with the camera. It strikes me that, that this kind of filming very different from uh, a lot of other documentary filmmaking, filmmaking in that you're running with a pack of, uh, of cameras. Can you talk about what the, the challenge of that was? Well, uh, before I had both hips replaced and uh, my ankle, you know, I, I used to be uh, I used to be an athlete, and I, you know, and it requires a certain amount of uh, ex football player to be in those scrums, and uh, like that scene with Buchanan where you can't see anything, you don't see it, but I'm like. Really <laughs> knocking people out of the way and then you know holding the camera up like this. I was wondering, I was wondering how you got the fight. It looked like you'd stepped up on a car or something. But, um, but you know, in terms of shooting that movie, we, it was like we were, we were we weren't shooting what was happening. We were shooting what wasn't happening. Or we were shooting. It was, it was all about the the fringes and the uh, the ambience and the. It was like, you know, the first time they pitched Seinfeld, it's a, it's a, it's a show about nothing, right? And it, uh, that was sort of what I was looking for, was the kind of the nothingness around it, all this high energy that was kind of to no avail. Was the way I it. You can uh, take some questions uh, from the audience if you have one, just raise your hand, and we'll call on you. Yeah, over here. Um, what was it like to license the satellites uh, did you have to? Uh, it was quite easy. We just stole it. Uh, and we looked into the legalities of it. And uh, as far as we could see, we weren't breaking any laws because this was essentially electronic garbage. These networks had not recorded it themselves and thought it worth preserving. It was just some stuff that was floating around in the ether, which we pulled down. The closest legal precedent we could find was uh, a bar in Kansas City that used to show the uh, Kansas City Chiefs games when they were blacked out in Kansas City. Uh, and they were, they were sued and uh, uh, the Chiefs won that one. But we didn't think that was the same thing because that was for that was infringement of trade, something that they could actually have some value, like buying a ticket to the game. This, you know, uh, anyway, nobody ever bothered us, and we did not license the food. Uh, doing this in New Hampshire, did you get any strong sense of who was going to go all the way? I mean, did you pick up on something about Clinton at all, or did it surprise you? What did it surprise you? 
No, I wasn't surprised. Uh, being around the guy, I mean, he was like Elvis. He, he, he did have personal magnetism in a room. And he wouldn't leave a room before touching every person in the room. That's why he was always late for his next event. Uh, so he seemed like a natural politician. Uh, so I, w I wasn't surprised when he, when he moved on. Yeah, well, I, I, I think the middle, of, I think middle of the road, middle to the right, Democratic politicians always have a head start. You know, they're gonna, if they don't win, they're gonna do something wrong. <laughs> so he was, he was sort of perfectly placed if you ask me. And there was a lot of, but, but what Buchanan, Buchanan was really important in terms of knocking out Bush because what Buchanan started, you know, you see it all around today. That's all from the stuff, the Tea Party and everything, that's all really stuff that Buchanan had fooled around with, you know, he knew very, very well, we were working for America first. Pat Buchanan denied me my first uh, press pass. <laughs> in Washington <laughs> when I was uh, a young reporter. But I, I, I like him very much. I think you did too, didn't you? Oh, it was so much fun to be around. He was, he was having so much fun. It was fun to be around him. Yeah, you know, he, was, he was a really jolly fascist kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years later, what do you think is different about political campaigns now from when this time? Oh, this is campaign stuff. This is totally dominated by these crazy talk show people who just left and right, who just scream at each other. I mean, led by Chris Matthews, if you ask me. Um, you know, every night, and you know, they're all, you know, giving their opinions with, on subjects that they basically quite openly admit they don't know anything about. Um, and there's, they should kind of, I don't know, it's just sort of like a, a seal over any kind of real, like, politics, if you ask me. Um, so I, I just feel like bombarded by these guys. And, and it's not just Chris Matthews, it's a whole range of them. There's the amusing moment where Jerry Brown is conventioning about not getting onto NBC, but uh, you know, he's only getting CNBC, which is the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, fresh hand here. Um, Kevin, do, could you, 20 years later, maybe talk about the editing, like the pacing of this film compared to maybe documentaries now? And I, I don't know if we see like so many long shots where you kind of really hold that audience and maybe for time, comedic timing and other things. Can you talk about that compared to what we're seeing more commonly today? Well, I... I got inspired in, I started making films in college, but uh, was really sitting in my apartment in Cambridge, Massachusetts in, I don't know, 72 maybe. Uh, I was watching television and it's smoking pot, and it was uh, Frederick Wiseman's film, uh, Basic Training was, uh, some of those shots could last for 10 minutes, and the cameraman was really good, rock steady. And it's mesmerizing, and I just thought, boy, you know, I could do that maybe, you know. And uh, so I, I, and I've been trained by Bauhaus type people in college in the design department, and uh, so it all kind of. I started out shooting verite, no narration documentaries, and then when we did Atomic Cafe, of course, there's no. I've never used narration, so no narration. Take uh, one or two more questions. So, uh, so was this? This is in some ways the first real presidential campaign that, in which cable was a played an important role. Did you feel like that cable was changing the the, the nature of the game in, in this election, or was was anyone picking up? I mean, I just think of how Obama really picked up on the internet uh, in the last election. And, and sure, was it was a cable. So, well, I, I, I got a question. Yeah. I, the thing that really was um, that I saw that I thought was interesting was that Fox, you know, which is damned by all the liberals, has extremely good reporters, and the Fox reporters were really, really good, you know, really good political reporters, much more so than the networks. And so, in a funny way, you know, Fox was sort of like just getting going. So I've always had a kind of like a high soft spot 
for the Fox people. Just full of surprises. <laughs> <laughs>